Let's go here. Okay. So welcome to this first introductory webinar, uh, Farmer Info Session for the 2023 PEEP program. Um, this will be our second cohort. Um, well, I'll constantly refer to it as PEEP2 or the second cohort. Um, I'll go through our slides and I'll stop from time to time to ask some questions. Um, and, uh, and you can put some questions in the chat if you have them too, and we'll work on them from there. Um, there will be a question and answer session at the end of the thing as well. So if you have some like a big ones, you can ask them there as well. Um, and there will be some of the PEEP1 cohort one folks showing up that we, they can answer some questions about what they learned from PEEP, what they got out of it, what was interesting and such. So our agenda for today to talk about in this session is a little bit about Malama Kauai. Uh, a lot about PEEP and what the program does. It stands for Poultry Egg Education Project. Uh, I'll give you the schedule, like an overview of the schedule, but the schedule is going to be very uh, precise and technical. Um, I'll talk about me, your hostess, weird, and uh, what the educational components are, what the supplies and equipment are that come with PEEPs. We'll talk about who is eligible to participate in PEEP. We'll talk about the application process and then um, have a little Q&A at the end. About Malama Kauai, what we're, our mission is uh, we focus on increasing local food production and access for a resilient Kauai. We've been doing that since 2006. We've done a lot of stuff um, just so that, that you would be familiar with us and know that that we do a lot of things and we're good at what we do. Um, what is most important for uh, concerning for new farmers um, is Kauai's first food hub is what uh, Malama Kauai is doing now. And a food hub is gets food from local farmers and aggregates it to eaters. So it kind of uh, superpowers what one farmer can do uh, to get their food out into the community. And it also superpowers the consumer's ability to get all kinds of food from all over the island too. So that's what we're mostly doing. We're building a food hub facility in Moloa'a now. And um, so we're sort of operating out of Lahui now, but our uh, new food hub facility will be very uh, fancy and exciting. Um, KauaiLocalFood.com is the market where you can find the local food and see what we sell and what we do and how we get it out. We do two distributions a week for local food, and that's what we're doing. The eggs that we're going to be uh, developing through the PEEP program will be sold on uh, KauaiLocalFood.com. So the guaranteed market for your eggs already exists. Um, and then the more stuff we've done, we've we've distributed five hundred thousand dollars in local food. We do that every year. Uh, we we do farm to school projects, farm to early childhood education. We distribute free free food through Keiki programs. Uh, we've given over five hundred thousand dollars in grants to farmers since two thousand eighteen. Uh, we do a lot of support for farmers and food producers, and that. Um, is something that you can benefit as being a producer with Malama Koegi. The purpose of PEEP. Um, I will just read this out for you. Our 2023 poultry egg education project is supported by the USDA Beginning Farmer Rancher Development Program, BFRDP. This program invests in minority farmers and ranchers to help rebuild sustainable agricultural economies in our community while increasing equity. So for the cohort one, um, 2022, we graduated 17 egg farmers, 12 of which are native Hawaiian specifically owned, and uh, four of them were uh, minority owned farms. Um, what we're doing through this program, our goals are to build chicken egg farms to boost ag related revenue on Kauai. That ag revenue uh, is for farmers too, it, it, mostly for farmers, sorry. Uh, we're providing an accessible local protein to our customers. 
especially those using SNAP and EBT that pay for the groceries. Uh, protein is one of the most difficult things to purchase locally in the local economy. So the efforts that we're doing, providing eggs for the economy is really does a lot to fill the gap in our food system for what we're able to distribute here. Um, and then we're also adding to island food security, sustainability, and collective knowledge of raising food on Kauai. One thing that PEEP is going to do is compile all of our knowledge and our education into um, video segments on how to effectively raise chickens for food in the tropics. Um, there's sort of a gap in that as I've been researching chickens and, and how, to, how to raise them and what to do and homesteading and all that. There's no real resource for how to do it in the tropics versus like Kentucky or a cold weather climate. Um, so we have different considerations when we're building our coop. We don't need to put a heater in it. <laughs> and many of our coops are sort of open air and not closed systems. So yeah. there's different considerations that we have in the tropics. So that's our purpose, what we're really doing here. Um, our pur purpose also for PEEP was developed to help you, the farmer, with education, support, uh, expense reduction, and easy sales. The education we're going to have, um, and I'll get more of this easy, get into more of this later, but the education is sessions uh, over Zoom that uh, are well, educational stuff. How do we say that in English? It's good stuff in which <laughs> um, there will be uh, CTAR uh, doctors coming in and talk to us, talking to us about livestock. Um, we'll have feed people coming to talk to us about the best ways to feed our chickens. We'll have uh, experienced people talking about uh, scaling up your operations, incubation, um, the livestock vet to help us with uh, health for our chickens too. So there's a lot of education that we're going to get um, that is a little more hands-on and a little more intentional than you would get from a blog or from the internet. Um, support that we're getting, uh, we will have a small network of farmers on the island that we can talk with, collaborate with, cooperate with to get our product to market. And then if you have questions about like, what does it mean when my chicken does this? Is this a healthy egg, et cetera? or we like, is this normal questions? Um, we have a, a support network of each other that we can talk to about it. Um, expense reduction. The PEEP gives you a lot of the components that you need to start your own chicken farm. So, and that's one of the barriers to success is just getting started. So we're here to do that. We also intend to, in the future, work on cooperative buying for feed and cartons and um, how we can do that. Also easy sales, we have built-in sales channels with kawaiilocalfood.com and our food distributions that you your eggs have a guaranteed market um, before you even begin. A few things here that are notable before you are gonna make your millions as a chicken farmer, PEEP will not make you rich. It is meant as a supplemental income part-time side gig. Um, it is not meant for backyard chicken hobbyists. It's a small business, which means you need to invest of your time and your resources in your business. Um, when you look online, most of the blogs that you see about raising chickens or chicken farming, they're about backyard chicken hobbyists. They have four birds, 10 birds, and that's that's what they're doing. They're just providing it for their home. We are we are setting you up for a small business. It's a small business, but it's still a business and it needs to be treated differently than um, hobby. Like, I'm just gonna give some eggs to my friends and family. It's, it's a lot more eggs than that. Um, I know many of us have a family that can eat 15 dozen eggs a week, but I want you to sell them. Um, PEEP is a commitment to an educational program and to our local food system by feeding our community. So you're, you're gonna be in it for uh, several months with the education and with the collaboration with people. Um, and, and then you'll start selling eggs in the program. We'll be in constant contact about that too. So you are sort of committing to this group of people. Um, there's no actual, you know, 
weird enrollment or anything. You don't have to wear chicken costumes or special pins, uh, but we are, you know, we're together. We're in this together. Um, Peep will educate you on how to be a small chicken farmer and um, small farmer of chickens. They're small chickens too, as it goes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, I was like, huh? um, so Kauai imports millions of eggs per year. Um, I can't even find statistics on it for how many eggs that we import, but it's absurd. And I want to make a dent in that egg import market. Um, and we, we have been selling just um, over a hundred dozen eggs per week here at Malama Kauai. Every time you talk to someone about, hey, I, I've got eggs. They're all like, I love fresh eggs. So there is a market for it. People want them. It's a gap in our system. And, um, and I know that we can uh, fill that gap uh, on the local food system. But you, you know, still got to remember, like, I'm not going to be a millionaire off of um, 50 chickens. Before I get into this slide, I just want to let you know that the picture on the side is of Susan. And she's awesome. She represents someone who did a really good job. Um, not someone that it didn't work for. Um, PEEP is not going to work for someone who is too busy. Uh, we, it, raising live animals takes time. It's hard. It's, it's a thing. Um, and so you, you need to sort of commit some time to doing it. Uh, you'll have to do something every day for your birds. When you're, when you're uh, on vacation, you have to arrange for someone to take care of your birds. Um, especially when they're babies, like I'm constantly looking, constantly listening for panicking birds in my backyard. It's just a thing. Um, it will not work for people that are uncommunicative or, or flaky. Um, I need to know if you can show up, how many eggs you're gonna sell, um, if you flake out on the program or flake out on, on selling or don't want to have chickens, like that's a big deal. Um, and I, you know, we need to talk about that. Um, people who don't honor their commitments, same thing, it's not going to work. Um, if you're a passive learner, if you're not taking initiative to learn the things that you need to know, um, it, it won't work there either because uh, each, each farm is going to be an individual. We'll be learning together, but your farm is your farm and you're, you're the one who knows it. So you'll need to take initiative to provide for that area. Um, if you're per purely financially driven, it won't work either because you'll be surprised about um, how much feed costs or all of a sudden I need to build a fence or something like that. Um, you'll be doing it for, for passion first and then uh, finances second or third. People that are uncollaborative, and I wanna mention this particularly in that um, collaboration is a really, key component of what we do at Malama Kauai. And what I mean to establish with PEEP is a group of people that we can support each other. We're not competing with each other. We're not stepping on each other's toes. We're not going, you know, just catty weird stuff. None of that. Like we work together, we drive each other's things around. We help with each other's chickens. We, um, we give advice and tips and pointers. And I, I mean for that to continue with all of us too. Um, I, I can say that it's been really wonderful in the first cohort to see um, the friendships that we've developed among each other and the sorts of support that we um, can give each other through our different communication needs. Um, so, and again, Susan's fantastic. I think she wins an A because she went from bewildered to uh, producing several dozen eggs per week. So don't take her picture as personal. Our program schedule. So our informational webinar and Q&A is today. That's the first step for PEEP. Program applications. I know that some people have filled out applications already. I'm really excited about that. The applications are due by November 1st, 2022. Anything after November 1st, it will not be accepted. Selections will be announced on December 1st, 2022. 
uh, well, you'll hear if you if you've made it in or if you haven't made it. And it's we're going to be very picky this year because there's only five uh, positions available. Last year we were able to fund 17 positions, but this year it's only five. So flatter me when you're applying. Um, but <laughs> sorry, Megan laughed at me. Uh, the program officially begins. The first day of classes is January 12th, 2023. That's a Thursday. I'm hoping that we can have classes on Thursdays, but uh, we'll discuss that among everyone. And graduation, June 18th, 2023. So you can mark your calendars on that and I'll have a more detailed uh, curriculum list and schedule uh, when we uh, have our interviews and talk. Um, part of the application process is uh, I'm gonna call you for a, a personal interview and then a site visit to it. Like, I'd love to go to your property and see what you've got going on. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, while you're there. Are there any questions right now? I feel like I've been talking really fast and really long. I apologize for that. Any questions right now that I could answer? That's what I like to hear. Okay. I do have a quick question if you don't mind. Yeah, awesome, go for it. Sorry, I jumped on late because I um, I was checking my email and I didn't see a, <laughs> a login. And so I was kind of like, oh, maybe it's not happening. But then I checked again and I saw it. Um, yeah, so sorry, that, for, that was sorry awesome. for being late. Oh, I did no. notice on the last slide, um, you were talking, you were mentioning about different things. And um, I was wondering, maybe you already covered this, but um, what people can expect to make, you know, monthly from taking on an endeavor like this? Like, what is the mm -hmm. financials like look like? And I'm sorry um, if you talked about this. Right. I haven't, I haven't gone into that yet. Okay. What you, what you get out of the program uh, kind of goes with what you put into it as well. Um, so you can do some math if you've got 50 hens and uh, they're going to lay X amount of eggs per day, um, per week. How many dozens is that? Um, so, and then how much your feed costs? Are you going to choose organic feed versus non-organic feed? Um, are are pigs going to eat half of your chickens, you know, things like that. So there are, are components to how much you will be able to make. Um, Megan, you had something to say? Yeah, no, I was just going to mention so part of the program we work you work with you on is a P&L or a profit and loss statement, because a lot of how much you're able to make has a lot to do with different business decisions you make. So are you going to go strictly wholesale as, as your market? Are you going to mix that up with also doing your own direct to consumer retail market? Are you going to increase the number of chickens that you have in your flock beyond the 50? Um, you know, are you going to go for organic feed? Are you going to charge a higher price because you're feeding your chickens organically? Um, a lot of it's in there. What we did was we built a spreadsheet that can be a template for you to play with to kind of see what those different um, decisions model out as financially. And if you are interested in seeing that before you make the decision, I think it's, you know, a decently smart thing to do. And I'm happy to share that with you guys if you want to email us. Yeah, I think before, you know, starting a new business, it's good to always potentially see like what you could potentially make. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and like we said, it's really, you know, I don't think you were here for that part, but um, if it is a financially driven thing, I mean, this is probably not the best business to get into. There's a reason why chicken egg farms don't exist in high volume in the islands and it's importing feed is incredibly expensive. And so the margins on chicken eggs are not as big unless you go to economies of scale and have 20,000 chickens. So, you know, this mm -hmm. is more about, you really wanna have eggs, you wanna make some side income, um, you really want to support feeding your community, especially those who don't um, have a lot of access, because that's really the channels that we're trying to push the eggs out through. Um, it's about a lot more than than making money, because if you're going to make money and say, like, go invest in Bitcoin or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, that was Megan Fox, who's the executive director of Malama Koi, too. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm sitting next to Annie, but we're not um, keeping our volumes on so that it's not echoing around for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's not gonna be like uh, like your main source of you know, income. I, um, I yeah. Know it would be like a side, a side mm -hmm. thing, but um, yeah, like it'd be good to have, yeah, like a kind of a sample, like what did Susan make, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because Susan's is great. Um, <laughs> if you, uh, you want to drop me an email and remind me to send you a, um, a sample p and um, my email is going to be on the last slide here. And um, feel free to email me, ask me questions, anything like that. Um, do I have any other questions? Anyone that just jumped on and want to ask me a question? Because I, I got more to say. Keep going. Okay, cool. Um, that's me. Um, my name's Annie. Um, I am a programs manager at Malama Kauai. That's my job title that I gave myself. Um, my farm's name is the Henna Tentury. Uh, I have, a, yeah, I played roller derby, so I had to have good names for things. Oh yeah, bad hens lay good eggs. Um, tagline. So uh, I have about um, 70 hens right now at my house. They're all uh, enclosed in about 450 square feet. I have four roosters. They're horrible people. Um, I have a lot of old hens that don't lay regularly anymore, but I don't have the heart to do anything with them because they're friends at this point. Um, I also have 10 quail and I have 25 baby chicks that are on the way that I'm about to start scraping to integrate into my flock. Um, I, I, I'm just, I, I start businesses for myself all the time because I love it. I'm just a serial entrepreneur. Um, so I, I don't even eat eggs anymore. I just sell them. Um, I sell them through Malama Kauai's store and I sell them to friends and family. And when I'm dropping eggs off to people, I will, um, bring an extra dozen so I can sell them to a bystander. Like I sell eggs. Um, they're, oh, wait a second. Um, I was also a participant and the facilitator of the grant program for the cohort one of Pete. Um, and this next year I will be uh, teaching the programs and facilitating the grant and doing all of the things. Um, I am not an expert on chicken raising, but I'm experienced and I know where to find answers if you have questions. Um, I do have the backup of our peep cohort from the first time. And I know that, that there's some really knowledgeable people on there as well. So um, again, I'm not an expert, but I am an entertaining speaker and I can push papers like no other. So um, that's me. These are my birds down there. Um, they're terrible. Um, the uh, educational components of what we're doing with that, it's education by Zoom. Um, so we don't have to go anywhere and waste our time driving. It's about seven months, about six months maybe. Um, and it's two hours per week on the Zoom. Uh, you might wanna do some extra reading or some extra things. You'll be tending to your birds as well. Um, and that can take, you know, five minutes to an hour per day. That's, it's all up to you. Some of the topics that we'll be covering are um, how to raise your hands, which method you wanna to get to it. Um, uh, coops and coop building. Um, you will be building your own coop. Um, how to feed chicken anatomy, uh, diseases, parasites, uh, raising chicks, um, what to do with your old hens. Don't leave them sitting around your coop like I do. Um, egg production, food safety regulations, business and marketing, we'll, we'll be covering all of it. We'll also be doing some site visits and field trips. Um, we'll visit some uh, high functioning chicken farms. We'll visit some of our uh, peep farms. We will be keeping um, biosecurity in mind when we visit each other. So we don't wanna take the mung from my chicken farm to another chicken farm and mix mung and then cause potential outbreak. So we'll be very conscious of that. Uh, part of it also is some meet the farmer, peep pal hanas. Um, after all the education is up, I wanted to connect with 
different chicken experts from across the state so we can ask them questions about, um, about scaling, about incubation, about, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk to a gentleman who uh, slaughters chickens and what, what that has added to his business and life in general. Uh, and so there's, and then any topics that we want more information on, we can explore that too together. Uh, and then graduation is a resource fair, fair um, uh, with different uh, farm services agencies from around the state. And uh, our, we have a grant evaluator. She's, she'll come and ask you what you thought. How can we make Pete better? And uh, we will have, of course, an omelet bar because we have eggs. Are there any questions about the educational parts? We have awesome Good. egg for young. Yeah, we made egg for young as well. That's awesome. At our, <laughs> at our graduation. Um, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. I'm at my farm and my phone might die any second. I apologize. Um, and my chickens are looking at me really hungry. But I heard you say that you guys do site visits. And when you say that, you mean like to the participants place or like to past participants or to farmers that are actively doing what we might want to do um, in the future? All of that. All of that. Okay. So I have for our, our second class is a field trip where we're going to go or we'll meet at my house. We'll see my farm. Um, I'll ask the permission of some of the other chicken farmers from the PEEP1 cohort and see if we can visit their place. Just so you get an idea like what stuff look like, looks like, how do I want my place to look as well? What could I do differently, better? Um, is the climate at my place similar to the climate at this place? Does this work? You know, and you can ask them questions and stuff like that. Um, we'll also visit each other's farms and then we can do like a show and tell and talk about um, the successes and what's great about like why you made your choices. Um, and then we'll also uh, check out some uh, of the larger chicken farms on the island. I think there are two that we can see. Um, so the, the site is in that respect. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Cool. Anything else about education? Love it. Uh, part of what PEEP does is provide supplies and equipment to you um, to, to take away that barrier of startup costs. So we're gonna give you uh, chicken coop building materials and um, money to build your coop. You'll have a small transitional chicken home. So it's like a transitional coop from when they're, they're babies to adults, they'll have something in between. We'll give you money for a brooder so that you can build your brooder. We'll give you a heater for there. There'll be feeders and waterers for adults and chicks. You will get 50 chickens. 25 chickens at the beginning of the program and you'll get them as chicks and then you'll get 25 at the end of the program so that you can reuse your brooder and um, experience integrating your flock because as your chicken gets chickens get older they lay less and you need to keep your egg production going strong so you get more chickens integrate and continually upgrade your flock. you also get um chick feed and nutrition for your baby chicks. There's also uh, 16 weeks of startup adult hen feed as well. So you'll get uh, chicken feed. That's one of the larger barriers, cost barriers to raising chickens. Um, you will get some wrap proof feed storage containers, logo stamp for your personal farm logo and name and an ink pad that you can stamp your invoices and your cartons and uh, whatever else, how you want to brand your business. There'll also be a couple of books and printed guides on that you can have at your house. Uh, there's one particularly on chicken health that I have found really helpful and helpful. So you'll get all of these things. It's an approximately $2,500 per farm of what you'll get to start your chicken farm. Um, we also have a few things for egg production as well, including a scale, some flats and cartons, uh, crates to carry your eggs around and bring them to market. Um, so it's a, it's a really good value in that regard. Are there any questions on the supplies? Sorry. 
this is Nalani. She's got um, a great chicken farm and she's a, an avid participator on our Peep Facebook group. Cool. Eligible participants. Like I said before, there are five spots available in PEEP cohort two. Um, all, all of the applicants must have these qualities that I'll be looking for. You must be a beginning farmer, which means less than 10 years of experience commercially farming in the US. Um, if you've been a gardener for 50 years, but you haven't ever commercially farmed before, that's okay. This means like money that you have earned and paid taxes and, and done it to uh, sell food on the island. You must have a farm location. And in this, I'm gonna uh, ask for proof of a long-term lease or that you own your land or farm um, because we don't want your landlord to kick you out of your house and then your, your farm is done. Um, we wanna show that you have uh, a commitment from your land holder or leaseholder that you can do this there. Um, sometimes land landlords are surprised that all of a sudden you have a chicken farm. Um, that could, that's a, that's a thing. So there has I need proof that you you've got permission to do this. Um, if you have uh, if you live in a residential area, make sure that you've checked your zoning or your CPR restrictions that you can raise animals on your land. Um, that's important as well. Uh, no surprises. You don't want to come back and go, whoa, I didn't know that I couldn't do that. I need to know up front. Um, we are, participants are going to be diverse as well. 80% of available program slots are reserved for minority farmers and ranchers. Um, that, that includes Native Hawaiian, all of it. Uh, these are part of the grant stipulations. Uh, as an effort to increase equity in our communities. Uh, must be collaborative. Um, opportunities to learn, price, buy, and sell together are strong advantages to staying competitive in the market. So we sell our eggs in Malama Kauai as a group. Um, and in that way, we're able to sell more, more eggs. Uh, we're able to sell them to food distributions and other places because we're working together. Uh, and that is that is really good. Um, participants that have a chip on their shoulder and aren't able to work with others, um, I'm gonna pass on. Um, uh, participants must be uh, committed to what they're doing. All classes and events must be attended. Um, on-farm work must be completed. Uh, we have data that we need to collect from you just to keep our standing with our USDA grant firm and well. Uh, we have a grant evaluator who is lovely, who collects data and shares it with us and all that. Um, as a demonstration of commitment, we have a $250 participation fee if you're accepted. Um, also, participants must be devoted to their community. So we. We live here, this is our home, and we're passionate about producing protein for local consumption, consumption and contributing to our island's food self-sufficiency. Um, that is our primary goal at Malama Kauai. That is why we engage help with, with and for our farmers um, because we want our island to succeed and be less dependent on um, imports. So, and we do that because we love our neighbors, our friends, our family, everyone that's here. Any questions about eligibility? I'm sorry, I have one. You, you mentioned a long-term lease. Uh, what is considered long-term? More than five years. Thank you. Cool. Um, the application process. So please apply by November 1st, 2022. Don't wait. Uh, don't wait till the last minute. It's an ongoing application process. So the applications that I've uh, already received, I'm gonna start calling on and start the interview process with you. Um, you can visit Malama Kauai's page at malamakauai.org slash peep. Um, and you can find the application there. You will find recordings of last year's uh, informational sessions. 
Um, and uh, you'll find all sorts of information on PEEP there at that page. Um, with your application uh, or during your interview process, please submit proof or lo of location for farm with an executed lease or title. Um, and you, you can email that to me, take a photograph of it. That's all you need to do. It doesn't have to be notarized or anything. Um, I just need to know that it exists. Uh, and then if you're in a residential area, do check your zoning and CPR regulations again, because um, you don't want to surprise anyone with um, 50 chickens, especially when it starts raining because the smell gets different. Um, I will be doing interviews uh, with site visits and selection is ongoing, submit early so we can do that. Um, I'm not the only person that makes the selections. Um, Megan is gonna help me and then I will probably um, ask a few people from our former PEEP cohort uh, to see what they, what they think too because they have been through it and they know who, uh, who lives or dies in our program. That was dramatic, that's not true. Um, but, uh, and this picture is Camille and her family and she, she her husband built for her um, these movable poops, chicken tractors. So they're great. Um, here is just a fraction of eggs that we do. Um, do we have any PEEP graduate, graduates in here um, that would want to answer a few questions of yes, us? Christy and Cami. Oh, fun. Um, so Jeff, Kristen, and Christy, Christy and Cami, Jeff, Christy, Cami, what is your what was your favorite part of Peep? And you know what what did what's the cool thing that you learned? What's your favorite part of being a chicken farmer? Give me your least favorite part too. Oh, Cami's ready. You got it. Camera's on. <laughs> Get it. <I'm> ready. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. So. One of my favorite parts about Peep, honestly, is having to interact with Annie because you're so witty <laughs> and so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good. Good. These are good but, points, by the way. Okay. <laughs> and I got to say, as someone who's, I, I grew up in the country my whole life, but I've never raised chickens. So I was definitely afraid of joining, but I wanted to try something new. So... I can successfully say and confidently say that I know how to raise chickens and I'm no longer afraid of chickens anymore. Woo, that's good. Any advice for, um, for people that are interested? Uh, definitely know that it is a commitment. Like don't take what Annie said lightly. It is a commitment. You do have, they're like children. You have to feed them. You have to keep them alive. You <laughs> on vacation in without you know leaving them with a babysitter or finding someone to care for them um mm -hmm. so yeah that part is probably the struggle for me because i i am a busy person mm -hmm. but i i still manage to do this and i do have a little help from my kid and my husband mm -hmm. but yeah if you if you can commit to taking care of a baby i think you can handle 50 chickens <laughs> I will say that I'm better at 50 chickens than I am a baby. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, chickens are probably easier than the baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cause I just, I don't know about that. I don't know. You can't, <laughs> you can't leave a baby in the yard, but I've got 50 chickens out there. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, what, what, a, what's your favorite part of peep and something you learned? What's your best and least favorite parts of being a chicken farmer? Um, well, meeting everybody and getting to know other peak members and you guys, great experience, a lot to learn. Even that the even though I've been um, chicken farming for a while, mm -hmm. but there was always something new to learn, and that's what I got out of this program. And the least part, I really don't have any complaints about it because I. I have a passion for what I do and I love doing it. And yeah. That's why I love this program. I love this program. Do you have any advice for um, for people just getting started or those just thinking about it? Um, just overcoming the fear of them pecking at your feet and legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That one's that one's agreed. Real. Yes, agreed. <laughs> I, I agree with you. 
I used to be terrified of that. And now I'm just like, eh, whatever, peck them back. Um, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I, I'm, a, I have a lot to learn from you personally, Jeff, like just, I, just your vision for scaling your farm and, um, how, how you just retain knowledge about birds and stuff. Like I, I have a lot to learn from you. So I'll be calling you. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully soon I'll get a bigger field, bigger farming. Yeah. I'm working on that. And, uh, with Kukui Ula. So, oh, cool. Yeah, I, I pet, yeah, that's where I work, but uh, there's a new owner to the land. So, Rad. There's a lot going on. So, hopefully, hopefully, sometime next year, if I can't get the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Keep trying. Hey, Christy, Sorry. what? Christy, what is your favorite part of PEEP and something cool you learned? And what's your favorite? best and least about being a chicken farmer? Are you still there, Christy? I cannot see. Oh. oh. Are you able, Christy? Oh, maybe we'll jump back. Um, my favorite part of PEEP was the educational components. Um, I had I had already been raising chickens, but I sort of was just, you know, threw them out in the yard and didn't know what I was doing with them. So I was very glad to learn things about them. Um, I'm, I'm schooly, so I was, I was all into the school part of it. Um, my, I think my favorite thing learning about the chickens was the anatomy stuff, um, just to see like how their body functions and what to do. Just, do you know chickens have like tons of ovaries in there so that they, they are constantly making different yolks for eggs. It's amazing. Um, my least favorite part of being a chicken farmer is the poop. Um, and my favorite part is that food just pops out of their butts and you get to, you get to sell it to people. Like it's amazing. Um, so my less, least and be most favorite part involves chicken butts. Um, my advice for those interested, uh, are to just really evaluate what you're doing and make sure that it is right for you first before you get into it. Um, because it could, it could be really bad or it could be really good for you. Um, you could find like something that, that really enlivens you or it could be um, something that is really horrible. So definitely evaluate who you are before you um, begin. Um, do I have any questions from um, from anyone here? Any participants? I do have one thing in the chat. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Are there any other questions out there that I can answer? Any um, ambiguities I can clear up? And can you give one golden nugget for a potential person trying to be? Um, a candidate in this round. One golden nugget for someone who wants to be a candidate. What's a golden nugget? Because I'm I'm thinking um, like, really one, well, golden egg. One strong takeaway, like this would be your ideal candidate. Um, my ideal candidate is someone who wants to try, and someone who really wants to put food into the economy. Um, ideally, you have your own land and you don't, you don't have um, too many time constraints. Um, so if you, if, you know, if you have the time and the energy to put into something and you want to create food and you want to try something new, but it's not completely foreign to you to, to work outside. Um, Tell me more. Yeah, Megan's going to jump in on this one too. So something I'm always looking for is really someone who 
can make a commitment and follow through. Like, I don't care if you're, you know, fresh out of the coop and know nothing about chickens. It's like, how- Fresh out of the coop. Yeah, I think it's almost <laughs> relative. Um, you know, something, just something in you that's going to push through and persevere because it is hard to go into like a six month program and make sure you attend every class and make sure that you, you know, build your coop or your brooder and the timelines that are given to you and participate actively. Um, you know, it's a lot. So I, I'm really looking for people who are, aren't going to um, settle because for us, from like a programmatic management standpoint, if someone drops out, that's kind of a failure and it takes a spot away from somebody else that could have had a spot in the program that didn't get one because somebody flaked out halfway through or something. So I'm always looking for someone that's really going to demonstrate they can push through no matter how challenging it might be. We all have very busy lives and you know, just making it a priority that this is really, really what they want to do, you know? Um, and I think the second thing is being easy to work with, you know, which we kind of talked in the other things, but like not being a Karen, you know, Every, <laughs> nobody wants to work with a Karen. Um, someone who's like communicative, understanding, collaborative, um, patient, you know, we're all humans and we just want to work together as a hui and do this in a way that helps lift everybody up together and feed our community. And um, someone who has that kind of value system and attitude is always gonna do really good in that group of people because we have a pretty awesome group of people. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and then as many things as we've said about like, this is hard, it's all this time, there's poop everywhere. Um, it's actually really fun. And the, the things, the enrichment that I've got gotten from working with animals and um providing for people has been really amazing um just i i there's always so many things to learn from animals and having them in your life too so that's that's a thing that i really enjoy about it too christy said she might be able to try again oh yeah are you can, on? can you hear yeah i got gotcha. okay it must have been my earphones oh gosh. Gotcha. You know, the best part of this program was all the education and the knowledge that it did provide for me and my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. My word to anybody who wants to become one is commitment. You have to love your animals and they'll produce for you and they'll produce a lot. Yeah. You just yeah. have to love them and constantly be there for them. So... I would say commitment would be the biggest part of any per participant to take care of your animals. Yeah. But I loved, I loved every part of the program. I want to go again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome to attend all the classes. Christy came twice a week to our program last time. Um, and I, what I really enjoyed about your, your experience in it is that you experimented with different ways to raise chickens too. And so I was, I was interested in, in that and how it worked out for you. So I still am. I still, I try to substitute, substitute their feeding and mm -hmm. give them more protein than they get in their feed, which is like sandwich meat and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And these chickens are, they're really lean. They really do like 20 dozen last week. And that wasn't even all of your flock. I'm sure. No, if you want 25 this week, I'll bring you 25. <laughs> I'll stick with 20. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for that, Christy. That was great. Um, another, another thing, uh, a frequently asked question is, can you join this program in a hui? Like, can, can me and my family do it? Me and my granddaughter, my son? Um, can, can, I, can we do it in a group of people? Yes. What I need is to have one responsible party though. So, cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna interact with all of you. I wanna react to the, interact with the one person. So there has to be one responsible person that comes to every session and every educational thing. Um, but you can bring your, your kids, you can bring your grandkids, uh, your business partner can come to the sessions. Um, so that is available to you, like if you want if you're going to have help in your farm, bring your helper to the educational things too. That's, that's an option. Um, 
Another question that I've gotten is, do you have to build your coop a certain way? Uh, yes and no, in which I'm gonna give you guidelines of a good way to build a coop, um, what your chickens need, uh, how, how you should do it. But I understand that we all have different um, things going on on our land. Um, you might live in Wainiha and it's super wet. You're going to build a different coop than you will out in Kekaha. Um, my, my land is, is dry, but I've got a lot of pigs. So I focus on, um, on uh, fencing a lot. Um, some people may live uh, on a sloped property. So your coop is going to look different than mine, which is on flat property. So um, dogs are a thing too. A dog will, a dog will come and just play with all your birds until they're dead. You know, where pigs at my place, they take them one by one, and I don't even notice it. So there's, <laughs> there's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, sad. I used to have a hundred chickens, and my dog wiped out so many that I was. Uh, folded it up and said I'm a better dog mom than a chicken mom. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's these sorts of things that happen. So you you do have this indiv individualistic approach to how you're going to raise your chickens, but I'm going to give you all of the guidelines and uh, steps that you'll want to take and uh, considerations for doing it. Any other frequently asked questions? Record keeping. We'll want to keep records and receipts and um, all of our notes on our chickens um, because this is a federal grant. Uh, so I need to have everything tight and right for them so that we can continue doing good work through Malama Kauai. Um, anything else? It's supposed to be fun. I'm real entertaining. Um, we have an awesome Facebook group. We have a Facebook you get invited group. to once you get in the program. <laughs> it's full of tons of questions about poop and chicken butts and feet yeah. and behavior. And you'll learn a lot from the first group of folks that went through the program. Yeah, and then you'll get to learn like, oh, my chickens aren't deviants. They're this is a normal thing that chickens do. So that's that's a thing too. Are there any more questions? All right. So uh, my email is on here. It's Annie, A-N-N-I, at malamakawaii.org. Do check out uh, the website, malamakawaii.org slash peep um, to learn uh, just some basic information. You can get detailed with me. I can send you um, sample P&Ls uh, if that's what you want to investigate before you make the commitment. Uh, ask me questions, um, chat me up. Uh, I'm really passionate about this program. I think it's really special and I love the opportunity to do it. So um, do uh, ask me anything you need. So thanks for joining us. Yes, I will turn the record. I'm sorry to chime in so late. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, sure. This was recorded. Where can I access the recording of this? Um, the recording will end up being on our YouTube page. Um, and a link will be on, um, yeah, we'll send the link out to you and to anyone who applied. Uh, we'll, we'll make the link available as well that you can learn more about it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Cool. Any other questions? I'm going to stop the recording right now. We can.